In the last lecture, we have studied about the graphical notation of pushdown automata and we have seen how we can graphically represent pushdown automata or how we can draw the transition diagrams for pushdown automata and we also studied the meanings of the different symbols that are used in the graphical notation. And we have also seen a simple example of designing a pushdown automata in the previous lecture. Now, in this lecture, we will be seeing another elaborate example of designing pushdown automata and this example is about even palindrome. Now the question says construct a pushdown automata that accepts even palindromes of the form L equals WWR for all W equal to positive closure of A plus B. Now before we understand what this language means let us keep one thing in mind that we are going to construct a non-deterministic pushdown automata for this. And before we even start designing that, first let us try to understand what are palindromes. You must already be knowing what are palindromes, but let us see again. Palindromes are words or sequences that reads the same backward as forwards. So palindromes are words or sequences that are same when you read it forwards or backwards. For example, I have some words here from English like noon, N-O-O-N. If you read it from the front, it is N-O-O-N and from the back side, it is still N-O-O-N. And here I have another sentence which says no lemon, no melon. And if you read it from the back word, it is still no lemon, no melon. It is the same. And we can also have numbers like this. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. And if you read it from backwards, it is still 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. Or we can have sequences like this. A, B, B, A. From backwards also it is A, B, B, A. And here I have another word which says race car. If you read it from backwards also it is still R, A, C, E, C, A, R, race car. So these are examples of palindromes. And we want to construct a pushdown automata that accepts even palindromes. So here from the examples that I have shown you here, these words like noon, it has four letters and even this sentence, it has 14 letters, they are e it is even and even this number, it has six digits, which is also even. This is also having four letters, which is even. So these kind of things are what we are going to design. But this race car, it has seven letters. It is not an even palindrome, it is an odd palindrome. So we want to design PDA that accepts even palindromes, but we are not going to design palindromes that accepts all these letters like this but our palindrome is limited to only A and B. The symbols A and B. The palindrome should contain only symbols A's and B's. And what do we mean by this positive closure? Positive closure, if you remember when we studied about regular expressions I have taught you, if you see positive closure it means that it should contain at least one symbol and it cannot be empty. Epsilon is not allowed. But if you see a star symbol over here, that means it also includes the empty symbol or epsilon. But since we have a positive closure or a plus sign, it means that it cannot be empty. At least one symbol should be there. And let us see what the meaning of this language is. W and then we have WR, which means the reverse of W. First we have W, which represents the first half of the string. Like for example, if you see this word, N O O N. The first half is this one, N, O. This represents W. And then W superscript R. This represents the reverse of the first W, which is O, N. N, O is the first W. And then O, N is the reverse of the first W, which was N, O. So this is how you denote a palindrome in this kind of language representation. And now we have to design the pushdown automata for this. And let's see how we can do that. So here I have already drawn the pushdown automata for this and here we have four states and we start with the starting state which is Q1. And in Q1 let's see what happens. We don't read any input symbol, it is epsilon and we don't pop anything from the stack but we push a symbol Z0 to the stack in order to denote the first element of our stack. So I already taught you that in pushdown automata we always have a stack and then we always want to know what is the bottommost element or the first element of the stack so that we can know when we reach the end of the stack. 
So I hope you know what these symbols mean. If you don't know, I request you to watch the previous lecture. So here in state Q1, we are not reading any input symbol and we are not popping anything from the stack, but we are pushing the element or symbol Z0 to the stack in order to denote the first element of the stack. Then we come to state Q2. In Q2, we can either get input A or input B. Now if we get input A, what happens? We don't pop anything from the stack, but we push that A to the stack. And by pushing, I mean inserting. So if we get input A, we just push it or insert it to the stack and we don't pop anything. And in the same way, if you get an input B, then what we do? We just don't pop anything from the stack, but we just push that B directly into the stack. That is what we do in state Q2. And then at this point, we assume that we have reached the midpoint of our string. Like for example, if we were taking this, we assume that we have completed this NO and we are reaching this middle point. So when we reach the middle point, what we do? We don't read any input symbol, we don't pop any symbol, and we don't push any symbol, but we directly go to the next state, which is state Q3. And in Q3 also, we can get inputs either A or B. And let's see what we do. If you get input A, you pop A from the stack and don't push anything. So if you get an A, you check if A is on the topmost of our stack or not. And if it is there, then you pop it and don't push anything. And similarly, if you get B, again, you check if B is on the topmost of the stack. And if it is, pop it and don't push anything. So this is repeated until our string is fully consumed or still our string is finished. And after that, we assume that we have reached the end of the string or our string is finished. And when we reach the end of the string, what we do? We don't read any input symbol, but we check if Z0 is the topmost element of the stack. So if you remember, Z0 was the first element that we pushed. So when everything is popped from the stack, obviously Z0 should be the only thing remaining at the bottom of the stack, which will be the topmost element in the stack at that point. So check if Z0 is at the topmost and pop it. And then we don't push anything and we reach the final state Q4. All right, now let us take an example to make it clear. Now let us take this example itself, A, B, B, A. A, B, B, A. Now let me draw the stack for this. So here I have drawn the stack and our input string is A, B, B, A. And we know that this is a even palindrome because if you read it from here, it is A, B, B, A. If you read it from backwards also, it is A, B, B, A. And this should actually be accepted by this push on automata that we have designed. So let's see if it is going to be accepted or not. So first of all, what it is, we start from the starting state Q1. And in Q1, we don't read anything, we don't pop anything, but we push this element Z0 to the stack. So let me push this Z0 to the stack. So I've inserted this Z0. And now I come to state Q2. And in Q2, I get my first input symbol, which is A. Now when I get the input symbol A, what do I do? I don't pop anything, but I push that A into the stack. So let me push that A into the stack. Now the next input symbol that I have is B. Now I'm still in state Q2, and when I get B in state Q2, what happens? I don't pop anything, but I have to just push that B into my stack. So let me just push this B into my stack. Now this is the condition of my stack, and if you look here, now I have reached the midpoint of my string. This is the middle of my string. And when I reach the midpoint, I told you, we don't read anything, we don't pop anything, we don't push anything, but we directly go to the next state, which is state Q3. Now, in Q3, let's see what is the inputs that we get. The next input we get is B over here. And in state Q3, when you get input B, what do you do? You check if B is on the top of the stack, and then you pop it. Now, I am checking it here. And yes, I have B on top of my stack. Now I have to pop it or delete it. Now I have popped it from my stack or I have deleted it from my stack. Now what is the next input I get? It is A. Now I am still in state Q3 and in state Q3 if I get A, what happens? I should check if A is on top of the stack and then I have to pop it and we don't have to push anything. Now let me check. Do I have an A on top of my stack? Yes, I do. So I have to pop this A. 
Now I have popped this A from my stack and the final element that I have is Z0. And here I have reached the end of my string. I don't have anything remaining. Now when we reach the end of the string, what do we do? We don't read anything, but we check if Z0 is the final element or the topmost element in the stack. Let's check that. Yes, Z0 is the topmost element and we can just pop that Z0 and we don't have to push anything. So now I have popped that Z0 from our stack and now my stack is empty and also we have reached the final state. So since we have reached the final state and also since our stack is empty, this string is accepted. It is an even palindrome and it is accepted. Now let me take another example. Now let's take the string A, B, a, B. Now this string, it is not an even palindrome. Why? Because if I read it from the front, it is A, B, A, B. And when I read it from backwards, it is B, A, B, A. It is not the same forward and backward. So this actually should not be accepted by the PDA that we designed. So let us form the stack for this and see if this string will be accepted or not. So here I have the stack for this and then let us come to our starting state Q1 and what do we do in Q1? We just push the element Z0 to our stack. So let me push Z0 to the stack and then the first input that we get is A. So we are in state Q2 and when we get A, what do we do? We don't pop anything but we just push the A to the stack. We push A to the stack and then we get the next input which is B. I am still in state Q2 and when I get input B, I don't pop anything but I have to push that B to the stack. So I have pushed the B to the stack. Alright, so now here I have reached the midpoint of my string again. This is the midpoint of my string. So when we reach the midpoint, what do we do? We don't read anything, we don't pop anything, we don't push anything, but we directly go to the next state which is Q3. Now in Q3, let's see what we are getting. The next input that we are getting is A. So if you get A as an input symbol in Q3, you have to check if the topmost element of the stack is A and then you have to pop it. Now I am getting my input A but when I check whether A is the topmost element of my stack, no it is not. The topmost element of my stack is B. It is not A. So this state cannot proceed and there is no where this state can go and hence it cannot reach the final state. So this string will not be accepted. So this is how you design a pushdown automata that accepts even palindromes of this form. Now if you have been listening carefully, there must be some doubts that you must be having. The first doubt that you must be having is that I told you that when you reach the midpoint, we don't read anything, we don't pop anything but we go to the next state. So in the first half, we just push the elements to the stack and then when we reach the midpoint, we started popping the elements. But how do we really know when we have reached the midpoint of our stack? There is nothing here to specify that I have reached the midpoint of the stack. So how do we know that I have reached the midpoint of the stack or not? And how do I know when should I take this transition from state Q2 to Q3? This is one question you must be having. So this question I will be answering in the next lecture and I will be explaining it in a very detailed way. But in the meanwhile, if you have any idea how this is done, I request you to drop your idea in the comment section and in the next lecture, you can check out whether it is correct or not. So this was an example of how to design a PDA that accepts even palindromes of this form. And I will be explaining this with more detail in the next lecture. So thank you for watching this and see you in the next one.